Greetings all for Iron Man 601 here. Welcome back to Aceto Corsa and welcome to the cockpit of Race Sim Studios Formula Hybrid 2022. And uh, what are we doing here today? We have long since gotten acquainted with this car. We have reviewed it in both of its specifications, in this trim and in the S trim. We have done hundreds of laps in it at basically every circuit on a game that's worth anything. But we're here today with FH22 because we have a new update to the car. You might be able to see just a couple of things are different here on the display as it is, but we have got a number of tweaks involving uh, setup options, involving some uh, finer points of physics and things like this. I'm not anticipating there to be tremendous differences in terms of drivability or the way that the car behaves, but there could be. So we're going to do 100 kilometers in a car here, which here at Silverstone comes out to be 16.9 laps. So we will be pitting on lap 16. So in theory, we should have 14 flying laps here. I am running on the soft tires, and I've got 120 liters of fuel on board. So we've got a lot of gas in a tank, and we're just going to figure out what's what. So we're running here. Um, no changes to the sounds, I don't believe. But again, some work done under the skin, and we'll see if we can feel any of this stuff. Very carefully going to bring everything up to temperature here. There is some porpoising. That's to be expected. I have set it up with some very hard heave springs here because we have had revisions to the physics, particularly the custom shaders patch extension. So I um, want to make sure that that's still working because obviously this ability to get into porpoising is something that's important to the overall experience on FH22. So I want to make sure that we have preserved that in this update and it does appear that we have. We've got a lot of gas on board, so the car is running a bit low. So the porpoising is going to be rather severe in these early laps. But as tire pressures come up and as the fuel load burns down, that should get a little bit better. Because as we discussed at length in the FH22 review that I did when the car came out in mid-2022, porpoising is not quicker. It looks dramatic and it's kind of fun because it is a novelty as far as sim racing goes but uh, it's not the quickest way to do it. So tire temperatures are coming up and that's actually one of the things that you can now see in this display on the steering wheel that has been revised for this version of the car. We used to have tire pressures in those four windows to the left of the display. Now that is showing tire temperatures in degrees C. So we are fairly uniform across the rear axle as you would expect because all your power is going through there, but the front axle is a bit of a split at the moment. Got a lot of right turns on this racetrack, not as many left turns, so we are getting uh, more uh, weight transfer and therefore friction and temperature into the left side tires versus the right side, so you have to just be cognizant of that. That split is slowly rectifying itself, though. You can see going through Stowe there, one of the fastest corners on the circuit, how much temperature goes into those left side tires. You understand the, the dynamics that are going on here and how incredible the engineering is on a car like this to be able to deal with those forces lap after lap, multiple times per lap. 
So far, though, um, qualitatively, as I bound over the sausage there, um, not really feeling anything that is untoward and not really feeling anything that is different in any appreciable way from what we've seen in versions one and two. Again, uh, the CSP physics extension is behaving as expected. Porpoising coming in at about the speeds and relative angle of attack. Thinking about the floor versus the track surface in this particular case, um, that's coming in at about the time I would expect and about the same time that we have observed in our operations with this car prior. Left side tires are over 90C now. The rights are still hanging out in the 70s, low 80s. Kind of made a mess of that lap, but uh, we'll be back on form. This one now uh, able to be flat through turns one and two. Again, fuel load is burning off, tire pressures are up. So the ride height will come up slightly which is going to help us uh, with the porpoising mitigation. going in through cops right before the turn-in point. We start to get the oscillation setting in, and we've got to bleed off of the throttle an awful lot just to get the car to settle back down, and that's where we're losing a lot of performance here with this particular setup. Again, running the car this low, even though it's partially a uh, side effect of the fuel load that we're running, it is not ideal. You do not want to get into this heavy oscillation like we currently have at the ends of the long straights. So, again... This is something that we have dealt with in the past. It's something we know how to mitigate. I just want to make sure that the effects are preserved, and apparently they are. And to the line, it's a 134.820. Not feeling anything appreciably different here in terms of force feedback. Obviously, we get a lot of loading when the porpoising sets in and immediately before as the suspension bottoms in terms of its travel because the car is bottoming in terms of its vertical travel but then beyond that once we're into the oscillating mode it's uh it's a rhythmic uh pulse through the steering as it has been the entire time that we've had this car again makes sense you can also see the live delta on the steering wheel numerically as well as represented with the lights, the red lights on right now because we are above last lap's delta. That still works as advertised. The RS and you can see the borders of everything on the display, they light up when a DRS is active. So that is carried over from version two as we have known this car and working as advertised. So that's cool. Let's uh, get some hybrid power going here. Lap six. We have roughly 10 laps to go. We're in balance mode on our deploy and the time is just gonna start to melt away now. And that is a little bit of an overstep on the entrance curbs.
You can see, though, what's going on with the rear tire. Obviously, we uh, had a pretty appreciable slide and a half spin, so um, the left rear took a real pounding on that. So obviously, we will wait until the end of this lap now to engage the hybrid system. But starting to gain a little bit of time there through cops, despite having to account for the porpoising quite a lot. And also, don't discount the change in ride height that occurs as you dial in more steering lock. The nose does lift as you uh, dial in more steering lock. The suspension geometry obviously changes a bit. You get a little bit more heave when you uh, bring the, uh, the lock on. So that can actually be enough to break you out of porpoising. All right, so now balance mode and a hybrid deploy. Our recovery is honored. We are in motor deploy mode. Now we'll see the time start to fall away. Rear end wanting to break away a little bit under heavy acceleration in the mid gears. Tires are not brandy new. Still gaining time through cops despite having to lift significantly. And through here, yeah, lots of understeer because we don't have a stable platform in heave. Again, all of that could be dialed out via setup. I'm exploiting the porpoising effect here for the sake of demonstrating that the CSP extended physics are still working. One thirty three seven oh seven. Squirrely under braking there with the weight transfer. Um, adding into this complex, of course, is always a compromise between all out grip versus trying to turn the car. Little dab of brake there into cops. Big lift. A little bit right of the apex. We save it there for the last bit of the complex. Half a second down on the previous delta. One thirty-three two two zero. Ah, we had to lift out. I was uh, flat to the apex, but wasn't going to work. We were understeering off again with the porpoising, and still more wheel spin under power in the low gears.
right on the cusp of being on the mark and being uh, a little bit above or below. So the car is able to track the uh, Delta to the nearest hundredth of a second, as it was able to do before. Break and a downshift through there. We lose some time, but we might gain some of it back. Yeah, gain a lot of it back, actually. Two tenths or thereabout. And holding two tenths through Stowe into the final complex. Yeah, three tenths down, 132.872. Very nice. Missing bridge corner, if I'm honest. Even though Silverstone has been this way for 13 years now? A long time. Down Wellington, which is actually one of the runways that uh, used to be part of RAF Silverstone. And in a pinch, I guess you still could use it as a runway. One hundredth down. Ah. Got a little greedy on a curb and it spat me out. As expected, we're out of power anyway, so we are going to turn it off and regen a bit. MDUH is now sending the power to battery. But we'll regen down the straights as well as under braking. Hope we'll to have a lap of this. Tire temps are stable in the uh, mid 80s to high 90s. Again, as you would expect, it's the right front that has the uh, least amount of use on this circuit. But everything else is fairly uniform, with the left sides, of course, being the most heavily used. We just can't let those temps drop off too much, otherwise these tires will just completely fall off the cliff and it'll be like being on ice. Lap 11 of 16, so we'll take uh, this lap and maybe the next for regen, depending on how we do. And then we'll push uh, as much as we can to the end. Again, we have to pit on lap 16. But all in all, I am actually quite uh, encouraged by what I'm seeing here. Obviously, this is still the latest and greatest as far as Race Sim Studios Formula Hybrid lineup. It's the only car they have done to date that is truly indicative of modern Formula One. And it is utterly a triumph. It was when they gave it to us in version one spec back uh, in mid-2022. And it is still the best current era Formula One type car available in Aceto Corsa. There is no contest in that. We are, I believe, up to 100. We'll confirm it when we're uh, coming into the veil, but uh, I believe we're up back to 100 in terms of our energy score. And we are MGU back to motor. And we'll go back to Balanced. There we go. All right. And now we're easy flat through turn one. That oscillation is still really heavy across the front axle, but it is now more manageable. The amplitude of that vibration has changed. We're not bounding quite as high as we were because the ride height is now coming up as the fuel load continues to burn down. Driving these cars, um, particularly this one, you become so adept at finding minuscule changes in your overall angle of attack in terms of the platform. By platform, I mean the center of pressure of the car, which of course you want to be in this modern spec of Formula One with a lot of ground effect aero going on. You want that to be right underneath the center. Fundamentally different from what we had in the past where we were 
predominantly manipulating topside arrow for the uh, performance, where you wanted the center of pressure to be above the center, but now you want it to be below the center. And you can feel that with this. You always could, and you still can here in version 3. Uh, so roughly three laps to go. <laughs> We will push this lap, we'll do a cooldown, and then we'll do one more push lap. Very good. Feels good. And traction is holding in third gear as I get hard into the power. Second, a little bit of wheel spin, but not too bad. Again, seeing the split in temperatures left to right, but uh, to be expected. We are one and a half tenths down on our session best. And two tenths, 2.1, 2.2 down. Little bit of neutral oversteer there, heading through Beckett's, but uh, manageable. We did lose about another tenth through it, though. And of course, as the tires have worn in, we're losing that ultimate performance. All right, uh, turning off the hybrid deploy, going into battery for the MGUH. We will harvest this lap. Next lap is our final flyer. We will push on it, and then uh, it'll be the in lap. But I got to say, once again, Race Sim Studio, every time you decide to update your cars, I, I have to confess, I do still feel a little bit of trepidation. Not because I don't trust your competence, but because sometimes I have gotten so used to a given car behaving in a certain way that when updates are issued and sometimes things change, and sometimes those changes are bigger than others, depending on a car and depending on the update, sometimes I'm a little bit scared of what I'm going to find, but this... This is still utterly magical. This is great. So if you are at all like me and you got the email from Race Sim Studio telling you about V3 for FH22, do not fear. Make sure that you reinstall the car just as you would a new one. I did not delete the uh, FH22 or FH22S before I installed this update, so I don't believe it's necessary, but uh, install it as you would a new uh, install when you first downloaded the car last year. But then beyond that, just go ahead. Your setups will carry over and all that. A little bit of very high speed oversteer through there. Just constant corrections at high speed with these little movements through the steering. And then if you comment to me uh, often, 
It's like, what are you doing juggling the steering around like this? And like, it's because that there are often little oscillations and little slides setting up that you can't see. Ouch. <laughs> well, that wasn't good. We were going to be below anyway. However, um, this is a good opportunity to see. Do we have any changes here with the damage physics? I don't think so. But anyway, yeah, these little movements with the steering wheel that you'll often see me do, I'm reacting to things that you can't see, basically. any rate. We do. We're out of power now, but uh, we at very least did have the ability to stay pretty much on par with uh, where we were in terms of our session best, despite having had that little excursion off into the barriers there. I believe it was Marcus Erickson a few years ago who had an absolutely almighty shunt doing exactly that. Broke the steering column and everything. But that is lap 16, 16.9 16 laps is 100 kilometers, so unless we fall afoul of Ben Sulaim and his henchmen, we are going to return to the pits. So, session best of a 132.872. That's comparable to the uh, lap times that we had done previously in this car in its various specifications. So, I am feeling happy about that. I have no criticisms or concerns. And there it is, RSS. Formula Hybrid 2022 in its version 3 specification. You'll notice a couple changes to the livery as well. A couple sponsors have been swapped out or deleted, but uh, for the most part, it is what it is, and it is what it has always been. And uh, in terms of graphics tweaks, nothing is really different in the model except for right here, this minuscule hook underneath the airbox, underneath the snorkel. That has been added. That is uh, a lifting point, so that uh, if the car needs to be recovered out on track, it can be. Other than that, that is what you've got here. It is the same model as you have had for the last uh, eight, nine months or so that the car has been out in the world. But uh, that's what we have here. Best lap time of 132.872 with the CSP extended physics on the standard trim of the uh, FH22. I have not tested the S trim yet, but... If this is anything to go by, I'm expecting it to be awfully similar in terms of the lack of drivability changes, lack of things that you can actually notice. But uh, no, from where I'm sitting, this feels like a cogent update. It does not feel like it's taken anything away from the car, um, nor does it feel like it's adding anything that is untoward or unrealistic or unwarranted. So this is good, again. You should have received an update from RaceSim Studio in the last few hours saying that this update is available and uh, go ahead and download it because, again, you're not going to lose anything. If you've got a certain way that you like to drive this car, you've figured out setups and you just are used to how it handles, it still does everything that you're used to. So don't worry about that. Believe me, I am terrified <laughs> when these guys issue updates on cars that are already brilliant, but it remains utterly brilliant, so I'm quite pleased about that. Until next time, though, I do thank you all very much for watching. Do check your emails. Racing Studio should have gotten into contact with you by this point. For IMAT601, saying thank you very much for watching, and of course, we will see you soon.